ain't for no shoot and shit. Posting it on IG, get FB. That for them dumb niggas. It's your drunk or stupid, you move like you want that rum, nigga. Got bananas and drums for them big guns. Not only for self defense, sometimes I gotta use it as a deadly offense. Just a force in the street codes. I told y'all not to fuck up. King G is in play. Put of a car as gunmen open fire on the driver. Innocent victims caught in the crossfire of suspected gang members. They are behind some of the most violent crimes on the streets of Metro Detroit. But police and federal law enforcement agencies know where they operate and they're working to take them down. Tonight, Simon Shaykat takes us inside the fight, only on 7. Narcotics trafficking, home invasions, carjacking, armed robberies, and murders. In the heart of the Motor City, they are committing the kinds of crimes that strike fear into the community. Most of us have been just outraged by how many young people have been caught in the crossfire of gang violence. So many kids, young people, babies. U.S. Attorney Barbara McQuaid knows what it takes to stop violent gangs, recently charging two members of the Six Mile Cheddar Grove gang in a shooting that killed a 13-year-old girl near a market on Hayes in the middle of the afternoon. We saw children sitting on the hood of a car as gunmen opened fire on the driver. 26-year-old Edwin Mills and 22-year-old Carlo Wilson, both of Detroit, now in custody for the December 1st shooting that also killed a 21-year-old driver. A nearby Cedar Grove Street near Denby High School. We found gangs are still marking their territory. They're mostly neighborhood based gangs, so they'll have a certain territory, certain blocks marked out in the neighborhood, and that becomes, in essence, their turf. The Six Mile Cheddar Grove Gang, known to rule the area near East McNichols and Kelly, and Houston Whittier and Chalmers. Other top gangs on the radar of the FBI Violent Crime Task Force include the Six Mile Bloods and Knockout Boys on the east side the Latin Counts and Serenios in southwest Detroit. But gangs like Roland 60's Crips aren't afraid to recruit north of 8 Mile in places like West Bloomfield or even over the border in Windsor. The 7 Mile Bloods previously finding young soldiers of their own in bordering East Point. Their territory is very sacred to them and the only people you know, really allowed in that territory are their gang members. Recently retired FBI supervisor Andy Bartnowak knows the streets better than anyone. He's seen how gang members can also threaten anyone unknowingly passing through gang territory simply to stop for gas, making this more of a regional problem. Cocaine, marijuana, heroin, pills, it's the, it's the lure of the easy money. You know, I talk with gang members who tell me things like, I don't expect to live past the age of 25, so I'm going to get what I can when I can. In the case of most modern Detroit street gangs, it seems pride becomes a powerful motivator for violence. Could be as simple as an insult between one gang or another through social media or through an exchange of words and then it results in usually some kind of violent act. But now the internet also serves as a tool for police and federal agents. Social media and cell phone data have become a prosecutor's best friend. Frequently gang members will pose with a uh, gun in one hand, cash in another, and the name of their gang, you know, on a, on a t-shirt. Yet, now more than ever, there are signs of hope. Homicides have declined since 2013. So far, there's been a nearly 50% reduction of shootings in the 9th Precinct in the past year. Tougher sentences are a huge factor. The first armed carjacking brings an extra five years if you use a gun. The second armed carjacking brings an extra 25 years. So you, then those get stacked. So if you have somebody who's done four or five, they might be looking at a 100-year sentence. Also reaching young people through a program called Ceasefire, Mayor Duggan, Chief Craig, and Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy call in gang members on parole or probation. And we bring in someone who we call the moral voice of the community, maybe the mother of a murder victim, to talk about the impact that this violence is having on our community. Simon Shaykat, 7 Action News. You were born in, in, in Detroit, right? Yes, sir. Okay, but you, when I look at the hood or whatever like that, I basically look at it as we all implants over there. Uh, you come from the Van Dyke area. Talk a little bit about being in that Van Dyke area. Uh, my Van Dyke area, it was, I was like really young. That was like my elementary school days. Uh, so I know a lot of people from over there, but it's from the younger days. You know what I'm saying? Like we moved from that area when I was like in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So I. It's really, like I said, just younger 
younger years, early years, elementary. Sandbox, in other words. Yeah, free lunch. Okay. <laughs> okay. And um, when I when I spoke on you when we, when I covered you in the earlier uh, and people still checking for that that episode, uh, y'all, you all can go back and check that out. And in that one, I described me and your relationship. Like I, I was said in the thing, like I didn't pull up trying to check what Chuck's hustle was or, you know, that type of nature or whatever. We just had a natural, you know, brotherhood or whatever. But in your opinion, how would you describe me and your relationship? Oh, you my dog, you know. Um, you from the Six Mile area. That's where I met you at, you know. Yeah. I seen you was doing your thing. I was doing my thing. And it just was a good vibe when I met you. Yeah. Uh, I basically know... Well, not your whole family, but well, a lot of your family. Right. And uh, we was cool, too. Like, uh, we used to be on Six Mile next door to your aunties. Mm-hmm. And they was real cool people. Right. Got along real good with them. Mm-hmm. Always had fun over their house. <laughs> right. So. Okay, okay. Uh, when you look at the, uh, the game, um... You know, you had a lot of young hustlers doing what I call the kingpin era. Uh, you was one of the guys that was out there young doing your thing, but the kingpins basically took over that era. So I sort of put us in the 90s because by this time, all of them have moved out of the way. Um, when did crack and cocaine and that the popularity of the hustle come, come to your attention? Well... Uh... Probably like my teenage years, like 86, okay. 80, 87, up in that area. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they had a lot of crack houses going and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, back in those days, you had one person may have 15 crack houses. Like, crack houses were like the thing back in those days. But when you look at the headline stories, because there's a lot of people from that era, they seem to think we exclusively follow them like that. We, we see the headlines, we know the stories, we very familiar with what, what's going on. But how did you view like that Kingpin era? Yeah, it's like where we're, you know, I know a lot of G's over here. You know, I'm personally from Six Mile in Oakland. My brother from like Six in Angling. My people from like uh, my cousin Odell, he like six in Goldburn, but you know what I'm saying, six mile runs a long way, so we all six mile. You know what I'm saying, trying to show y'all some highlights of the area. They go a dope thing. Oh, we missed it. Yeah, yeah, we missed him. <laughs> Let me see, we lurking, trying to see if we can find some hoes out here as usual. Right, right. I think it might be too early in the day, you know, the hoes come out at night. Yeah, what time is it? Uh, what is it? 1153, yeah. 1153 in the morning. Yeah, we don't no. luxury. We're the caddy again. She's on the symbol one time, you know. Caddy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. baby. That's how we do it up here in the Motor City, <laughs> baby. You know what I'm saying? That's how it goes down. Yeah, well, again. Uh oh, the things. Uh oh. We got the, something. We got some action. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still fooling. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of interesting when you ride and look at all this the shit. Stop. The DLT slow as hell, y'all. Yeah, don't never catch the bus in Detroit. It's going to take hours. You better get you a whip. Ain't For no real. subways uh, here. Is it? Is it? No money We got one? No. Nah. Six miles to the ground. Y'all bitches. Y'all bitches. Y'all bitches. Y'all bitches. The whole mob out here. The whole mob. Niggas don't want to be on camera. Cover your face up. Yeah, yeah. Get it in, bro. Stop tossing. Bro, you see me. You see me right here, bro. Bro, do you want to do something, bro? Bro, you see me right here. You not doing nothing. You not doing shit. Bro, let me hit that. Let me hit him. Then. Are you sneaking? I'm gonna play you, bro. If you sneak me, I'm gonna play you. Bro, shoot that money. We got bags, everybody out here. Shout out to us on the west end. We climb, man. We climb. Yo, 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 yo. We trying to do shit, man. I play, man. 
Yeah, and then you try to catch me off guard. My bad, bro. My bad, bro. My bad. We just thought that you not about that talk. I did what I had to do. Shoot. We all heard, nigga. Six miles, cheddar, girl. I'm hard. This shit. Real niggas, they plingin', they slap their clips in and get the springin'. They bruise to this shit. Real niggas, they plingin', they slap their clips in and get the springin'. I don't get close to niggas. I might have to kill you one day. Other than business, I don't have any friends. Fuck the world, it's only good for the ends. When it comes to that, motherfuckers pretend I gave you a chance by extending my head. But you bit my finger, shock mode I thought you was my man When I was in danger, you didn't pick up the ring M.A. to the motherfucking D, the mad genius If you don't subscribe, you a bitch!